today we're covering speech anatomy again as part of articulatory phonetics. We did the active articulators last week and today I'm going to review the passive articulators. Since we're talking about articulators, probably we should de provide a definition of articulation. Articulation is a term in phonetics that is used to refer to the physiological movements that occur during speech production, in which the airflow was modified along the vocal tract. That's the definition of articulation. An articulator is a specific part in the vocal tract or the vocal apparatus that is involved in the production of speech. So in other ways, when we speak of place of articulation or a point of articulation, POA, we are somehow referring to an articulator. So you might say, what is the difference between point of articulation or place of articulation and an articulator? In a way, in the articulation of a speech sound, two articulators come together in a place of articulation, okay? So the coming together happens in the place of articulation. In, a, in the place of articulation, an active and a passive articulator come together. So that's the distinction between, first of all, articulation, secondly, place of articulation, and articulator versus place of articulation. We learned in the previous video that when articulation happens in a place of articulation with two articulators, and why do we need two articulators? Because one hand doesn't make a sound. You need two hands to clap, right? In the same way, you need two articulators to come together to form a speech sound. In a place of articulation, two articulators come together, but it's actually one of them coming to the other. The other one is just staying in place, which is called a passive articulator. So all those articulators that do not move, they're there to receive the active articulator. Passive articulators are those parts of the vocal tract which cannot move, but which provide the active articulators with points of reference. Examples are the roof of the mouth, the upper teeth. If you look at the chart, the consonant chart, for example, in alveolar sounds, the tongue is the active articulator and the alveolar ridge, the passive articulator. What makes it the alveolar contact with the alveolar ridge? Okay, what comes into contact with the alveolar ridge. The active articulator can be the tip only, it can be the blade only, or it can be both of them because they're so close to each other that the tip as well as the blade at the same time would come into contact with the alveolar ridge. You can say that alveolar sounds are coronal. It could be that in different phonological environments, the same person uses only the tip or the blade or both. This is one way in which different people sound different. This is like the perfect picture to learn the passive articulators because although so the IPH consonant chart has names for places of articulation which are based off of passive articulators, by looking at this picture you will see arrows that connect the name to the actual place of articulation. You see, for example, the T, it points to the alveolar ridge, like everything that points, like the arrows are, for example, the upper lip, the upper front teeth, the alveolar ridge, the post-alveolar area, the palate basically, retroflex sounds somewhere in the palate, velum or the soft palate, the uvula for uvular sounds, pharynx for pharyngeal sounds. Now for the pronunciation of bilabial sounds, the passive articulator is the upper lip. For the pronunciation of labiodental sounds, the upper front teeth are the passive articulator. Now if you look at this chart, you should be able to name the passive articulators. and it would be much easier to name the passive articulators 
by looking at the IPA consonant chart than it is to name the active articulators. Why? Because these names are made off of the passive articulators. So you can, except for the first two columns, which is kind of tricky, by labial just remove by. So what is the passive articulator in the production of Pamba? Lip, upper lip. What is the passive articulator for labiodental sounds, including fa and va? It is the upper teeth, right? The upper front teeth. Dental sounds, it, it is easy. Okay, what is the difference between labiodental and dental sounds, considering that in both of them, the passive articulator is the upper teeth? In labiodental, it's the edges, the tips of the teeth that are used. In dental, you could use the tip or you could put your tongue behind your teeth. So for labiodental sounds like fa and va, it's the tip of the teeth because your, the sharp part of your tooth touches your lower lip. Where do you put your tongue for dental sounds? You could put it behind your teeth, but you could also put it in between your teeth. You could say the, the. Actually, when you're teaching someone these two sounds, which are common in English, if you teach them to a person who is learning English in whose language the and the doesn't exist, it's easier to tell them to stick out their tongue and put their tongue in between their front teeth. The, the. Because when you tell them to put their tongue behind their upper teeth, because they're not used to that, they may actually pull their tongue further back and it will not be dental anymore. It might become alveolar. <clears throat> and retroflex and palatal is a hard palate. In the retroflex sounds, it's a speech sound in which to when the tip or blade of the tongue is curled back. So you curl it back. But in palatal sounds, you don't curl back your tongue. So these retroflex sounds are common in the languages in India. The T, for example, which is alveolar, the, the, the retroflex version is there. So you, you, all you have to do is roll back, curl back your tongue. That's basically it. So if you look at that chart along with this, you will get all your answers.